advice. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. and welcome to our program. Now every week, well, okay, this time slot at 8 o'clock, that's what we do. We talk about politics today. But what exactly is politics and how does it go around? Where does it begin? Where does it end? And how does that become relevant to us other than people always arguing, talking, and non-stop investigating? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call it nation building. That's the direction I'd like to go and that's the way, right, that's where I have been going for the last few weeks. This way, I will be contributory to the products, the resources, and the ingenuity of the Filipino people. Because after all, without our own consumerism that, is, that envelopes our society till this current day, we have nothing. And the only way we can rely on ourselves are the products that we manufacture, the people that buy them, support it, and that's how we have our own local economy. I like to call the bigger brands, the brands that have made it through decades, that have been successful in maintaining, staying the course, employing hundreds of people, employing thousands of people if necessary, families that, that basically live off it and survive the country through taxes and basically back to consumerism. Our guest on this first portion is Salem. Now, that's not a cigarette. That's what you call the best in bed manufacturing. I know you all know the product, Salem Beds. It's been around for close to 40 years. It's been in this country. It's 100% Filipino made, manufactured, built, and Filipino ingenuity to boot. And it's available right here in our country. With us, we have their controller. We have Jerry Clemente. Hello, Jerry. Thanks for being here. Alam ko hindi ka sanay sa television ni. Good afternoon. Sanay na sanay ka. Manufacturing, eh, di ba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And accounting. More, more on financial. Oh, financial. No, but ano natin, because gusto ko talaga paharapin talaga ang Salem kasi being a manufacturer. Ilan taon na ba talaga kayo? Apat na, taba ba yan? Apat na dekada? Yeah. It's about uh, more than 40 years already. 40 years. Ah. And the person who started this, is this all because of Mr. Chu Yan, di ba? Uh, One person lang, ano? Yeah. It all started by the uh, father, uh -huh. uh, Chu Kim Chu Wan. Chu Kim Chu Wan. Uh -huh. Ano siya? Uh, gumagawa talaga ng kama uh, o na Actually, uh, he tried uh, producing his own uh, at, at the uh, Lalo, uh, Laloma residence. Okay. Oh, that, oh. that was the first time that he built uh, ano, a bed. Talagang ginawa sa kamay? Yeah, yeah. Handmade kapok uh, bed. <laughs> kapok yeah. pa kasi in yeah, the old yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. At the time, yeah. Oh, ah, so he really started that way. Talagang uh, backyard industry. Yeah, backyard. To what it is today, which is a very, yeah, very yeah, big yeah. brand yeah. Oh. today. And 40 years. And the people, ano yan, from the very start, you still have more or less the same people that have been in the company the longest no, time. Actually, dumami na sila. From around 100, we are now about 700 plus. My gosh. Yeah. No. Including oh. the ano, promodizers at the store. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, kasi yeah. Ano na kayo, distribution. Yeah, you yeah. are nationwide, correct? Yeah, nationwide. And if I'm not mistaken, you also, there are people who are interested in your beds abroad. Is, is this correct? Uh, sometimes. May mga naging import. Oh, meron na. din naging import. Oh. You know, meron, meron, meron mga queries, pero more on local kami. Right? Local pa rin. Yeah, And everything is basically. Yun know, ang maganda sa atin. At least, di ka kailangan maghanap ng ibang market. Narito ka eh. Nandito na. Kaya umaandar eh, oh. di ba? Pag sinabi mo Salem, basically bago na yan, hindi na kapok yan, correct? There's spring and foam and a lot of technology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, basically, it's the spring. Uh, the next level is the uh, coco pad. Coco pad. Uh, and then the uh, foam. Uh, and then the penis cover. Oh, yung magandang tela. Uh, Ipinaka cover. Alam mo, ang dami ng brands na lumalabas ngayon, nakikita ako sa mga SM, tsaka ako saan-saan. Ang Salem, bakit na yung iba sa kanila? Sige nga. <laughs> uh, hindi sa presyo lang. Ano? May kamahalan din kayo. Meron din kayong pangmura, meron kayong pangmahal. Uh, kasi it's the vision of the president na 
uh, we should produce superior world class uh, quality world class yeah so uh, nagcompete kayo nag-high end kayo yeah, yeah. we do have a, uh, at the same time parang it's comfortable fashionable uh, durable but then affordable pwede ba yun oh, all okay. of that pero affordable pa rin we situate na ano yung yung cost ni lesson namin eh para madaling ano mag-cater uh, sa mga ano yung ba mga produkto niyo mga resources niyo 100% local din ang nabibili natin no, around maybe 95% ang component is imported are really yeah, yeah, yeah. why can't we make it here uh, like like yung sa spring yung carbon steel it's all imported ah, oh, yun, hindi pwede second the chemical wala kasi tayong steel manufacturing yeah yeah, yeah. second the chemical yun. yung main components noon mga almost 98% in foam. In, oh yeah, in foam. In foam. Uh, imported. Ah, so it's not all that easy pala. Yeah. But the bed from where it came, yung mga kapok nyo, yung nag-umpisa kayo, wala na, you don't make wala that na. anymore. Wala na, totally wala na yun. Iba, na, iba na, na yung technology. But wala na market? Uh, no, meron pa rin, kaya lang we see to it na i-modernize, i- i-innovate dun sa, kung ano yung nakikater ngayon sa market. Ah. Yun, yun ang inan namin. Ang presyo ba malaking bagay o brand? No, actually, uh, we have ordinary, we have top of the line. Uh, yung 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 pricing is uh, it will uh, de- depending on the ano the quality of the, quality the bed. Of the bed. Uh, so iba ibang kategorya. Iba iba. Parang kotse you can buy mura na yeah, bago yeah, uh, pero nakakabili ka ng mahal na bago rin. Yeah, Parang ganoon. Uh, uh, How did you establish the brand Salem in 40 years? Ano yan? Just you kept on trying to be the best in in, in the in the country. Kasi ang dami ring imported pumapasok kalaban niyo eh. Mm. Paano how, how did you even succeed? <laughs> diba? No, what we did through our uh, account executive, our dice around the field, mm. tinitignan nila palagi yung ano, what's in, what's is in right now. So may ganun pala yan? Sa kama? May oh, mga kama, in and oh, out? Tinitignan din namin yung mga in component. Oh, component. component oh, tinitignan para ina-upgrade namin yan. Ah. Oh, kasi ano yan eh, parang damit din yan eh. Merong na off season, medyo nalulungan. Sa kama? May ganun? Oh, kasi even yung cover, yung, yung fabric cover. Kailangan ka from time to time nagbabago. So it's continuous innovation yeah. to stay in the market. Mm-hmm. But all these years, you've stayed, alam ko eh, you have one ad that stuck in my mind in the last 30, 40 years. Uh-huh. No? Yung may elepante naglalakad. Uh-huh. Yung, uh, how do you say it? Pinakamagaling, pinakapambihira ang, ang galing, di ba? Uh, uh, hari ng tibay. Hari ng tibay. Uh-huh. Hari ng tibay. Tapos may elepante na tumatapak sa kama yeah, niya, no? Yeah, That's yeah. your classic ad, yeah, eh, yeah, di ba? Yeah. Until now, you see, I still remember mm-hmm. that. I haven't forgotten that uh, for one reason or another. Uh, the elephant on top of the bed. Saan yeah. yung kinuha? May elephant ba tayo sa Pilipinas? Actually, yung, yung, what I know, yung original niya, dito nang ano yan, si Newt. Pero, oh, yung, yung, oh, oh, pero yung later on, yung pinaka-latest, it was Newt in Thailand. Ah, Thailand. Doon na talaga din oh, nila yun. Oh. How does... Uh, your marketing and your selling, does it get affected with China-made products that are coming in? Because, siyempre, it's hard to compete with China because of low labor costs. Yeah, low labor costs. Tapos, ang ng the utilities kuryente nila. It's oh, cheaper, savings, you know. Um, malaking diferensya. Yeah. And uh, ibang-ibang conditions. Hmm. How do you compete with imports? Pagdating sa ganyan. Di na ko mas mahal eh. Uh, abutan nyo pa eh. Pero... Oh. Di ba? Hindi, hindi kayo nahirapan naman, ano? Hindi. The same. Ang ginagawa namin, yung people in the field, nag-ano yan, survey sa mga market. Tinitignan, so, yung marketing mo, tinitignan din yun. Oo. At the same time. Marketing mo sila nag-aaral. Yeah. At the same time, oo. Tinitignan nila kung itong imported, ano ba yung price, price range niyan. Mm-hmm. And then, ang ginagawa namin, gumagawa kami comparable. Kunyari, itong ganito. Tapos, mag-aaralan nyo yung presyo, ang oh, cost niyan, kung oh, paano. Oh, oh, para, para makapag-compete kami. Doon ang ginagawa namin. So, in other words, talaga sumasabi. Not only selling, kayo. they're also conducting study on the field. That's a different approach. Uh, so, uh, your uh, actual, your people are the ones who actually do the research for you as well yeah. as selling. Yeah. How do you do that? Nationwide na kayo. Alam, uh, Salem is available all throughout the country. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We have also in the uh, Bismin area. Oo. Uh, uh, like, Pero, like, binabiyahin nyo doon? You don't no, manufacture uh, anymore before, there? Before, we, we ship the product there in the, uh, no? Uh, uh, but now, we produce our own plant. Ah, may plant talaga yeah. kayo sa Bismil? Like in CDO. Oh, kagayang di oro. Cebu. Yes. And then Iloilo. Ba, okay. Hindi oh. na lang yung plant doon. So, you're, you're providing labor there, an opportunity sure, for everybody. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Ba, okay. Eh. Noon dito nagumpisa, pero eventually, binaliktad nyo na. Oo. Uh-huh. Wow, that's a terrific uh-huh. idea. And, where do you think Salem's gonna go? Where do you think this market? Stable naman kayo, hindi kayo nahihirapan. 
obviously, uh-huh. I, I see it in the showrooms, kumakasa kayo sa mga malalaking pangalan na iba. Uh-huh. In fact, uh-huh. kayong malaking pangalan, kayong sinusundan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Parang ganun eh. Uh, actually, it's still the vision of the TU, TU family na for a uh, Salem bed for every Filipino home. Ay. Uh, <laughs> kaya basically, ang ano talaga namin target nationwide, the whole Filipino people. Wow, ano. so you will never run out of customers yeah, because yeah, no. at the rate we're growing, yeah, di ba? Wala, uh, 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 so, against RH Mill ka pala, pag ganun. <laughs> <laughs> Para lumaki yung market. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all this time, you've been creating, lahat ba ito innovations galing kay, to the old man, Mr. Chu? Hindi. You no, also... uh, actually, uh, it's entirely different right now. Eh. Kasi yung dati, old, ano yun, eh? old, old, old technology. Uh, traditional. Eh. Uh, traditional. This time, it's different. Modernized na. Even the components. Binabago-bago. And yan, you, you buy foreign technology, somebody goes abroad, you take it apart. No, no. Uh, local research only. Ah, really? Ah, uh, for local research. Saan nyo kinukuha mga tao nyo? Galing UP, uh, DOST, mga inventor. O sa inyo rin? You, you... Sa amin, on, on our own. Uh, mga engineers nyo? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ano, binabaklas, pinag Actually, we have a research and development uh, group. That's very important. You uh, know, a lot of manufacturing start they begin to forget that part. And really, that was the strength of America, R&D. R&D. Talagang para continuous innovation. Mm-hmm. So you have your own innovation yeah. and your own people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Walang ginawa kundi mag how to make it even better mm-hmm. oh. and cheaper yeah. and stronger. Oh, yeah. Sabay-sabay lahat oh. siya. Sila yung ano, somebody na nagkikreate ng bagong product. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, let's say for foam, ito yung dapat na bagong product. Mm-hmm. For spring, another one. Yun. Kanya-kanya. Kanya-kanya yun. But uh, I understand Salem is already. I know you're a super brand. Ladies and gentlemen, the difference with Salem, the reason I brought them here, because these nation builders are part and parcel. They're, they have the responsibility, they have the mandate. They're the reason why the economy is still afloat and our country is very strong with what we call consumerism. The manufacturer is local and the labor is right here. Pagdating sa produkto, you've expanded. You've already expanded to other products. No? Yeah. I've been to your plant and I've noticed you're now doing straight foam as well. Yeah. Uh, may nakita pa akong mga silya doon. Totoo ba yun? Ah, Hindi that's, na. That's iba another na thing. Ah, iba Aside yun? from spring mattress, mm. foam mattresses, we do have also yung imported ano, uh, furnitures for sale. Pinapasok nyo? Yeah, from, 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 from Southeast Asia. Ah, okay. So you're going to manufacture furniture at the rate you're going eventually? No, no. Actually, before, nagmamanufacture kami. But ah. because yung, yung trending, mabilis yung ano, paggawa changes. ng changes. Ang tingin namin, mas mabilis mag-import na lang. For that? For that. For that Pero item. yung kama, talaga dito, it will stay yeah, local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ano lang yung expansion lang yung produkto uh, yung furniture, na yun? except. How many products do you have on the beds alone? Marami, no? I've seen many brands. You have Siguro, D2. I bought a D2. Yeah, yeah. D2 ba yun? Or, Matas-taas na yun eh. Oo. Uh, Dita. That's Dita, Dita. Dita, Dita oh. yeah, yeah. Matas-taas na yun. Right now, siguro, we have about 10. 10, 10 types of ano, spring mattresses. Tsaka binibigyan niya ng brand yan, di ba? Yeah. You, you brand them as you go along, but yeah. all under the umbrella theme of Salem Beds. Yeah. Under. Pero binibigyan niya ng brand, iba-iba. Uh, uh, and these represent the price and quality? Yeah. From from the ordinary up to the, uh, the top of the line. The high end. Uh, so depending which which uh, which class in society you belong to, yeah. one affordability mo, uh, there's a Salem for you. Yeah. Yung very, very poor ba kaya bumili ng Salem bed? I think uh, we can offer them like yung, yung sleep, sleep saver, ah. uh, uh, premier rest, and uh, rest pool. Price ranges from about 5 to 10. Pero it looks, mukhang first class pa rin eh. Oh, okay. Nakita ko yung mga oh, brands eh. Oh. Mukhang first class pa rin eh. Mukhang durable pa rin. Durable pa rin. Mukhang mahal pa rin pero oh. it's not. Ha? Mga oh. ganun lang yung range na yun. Actually talagang minimaintain namin yung, yung comfortable. D- dapat maging comfortable siya, fashionable, durable, pero affordable. Ang kama, fashionable? Paano naging fashionable ang kama? Actually, it's because of the fabric. Ah, the fabric. Uh, then, we also produce, ano eh, uh, bed with the headboard, with cabinet. Ah, okay. Uh, we call okay. that night and day. Okay, night uh, and day. That's our uh, latest product. So, may headboard na, may cabinet pang ilalim? Oo. Uh, yeah. So, kompleto, the bed kompleto. is functional? Uh, uh. Pwede pala yun. Sometimes, in place of the cabinet, yung pull-out bed pa rin. Ayun, para may extra. Oh, may para pull-out for, bed. Pag may bisita ka, oh, o mas marami kayo sa pamilya. Mm. Ganon din pala ang kama, no? Oh. 
iba rin pala ng iba. You have to keep reinventing yourself yeah. kung hindi mawawala ka sa... Yung sa foam naman namin, dati ordinary lang yung penis cover niya eh. Ngayon, we yeah. do produce kilted. May design na yung pinaka-cover. Mm. We call that kilted. Kilted. Uh, And the foam, how long have you been in the foam business? You make your own foam. Uh, 19... I think... 1996, yung foam business. Wow, uh, 16, 17 years na pala. Yeah, yeah. Ano yan? You brought the technology Actually, uh, ang, ang, ang kwento niya, ganito, Harry. Yung kama namin, di ba, ang components niyan is spring, yes, yes, yes. coco pad, foam, and then penis cover. Yun ang layer. Uh, At that time, namumroblema kami sa foam, yung sourcing. Uh, kasi Even, wala. Oo, oh, tsaka yung coco pad. Whiskey and coco pa. Oo, oh, nahihirapan kami. Kala ko gawa sa Pilipinas yan, yung, yung husks yan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like this. Nung pumasok yung pinaka-youngest na anak niya, no, ni Tio Kim Chuan, si Ben. Uh, so sabi niya, para mapabilis yung requirement natin sa production, nag-create siya ng ano, manufacturing plant for ano, coco pad. We uh, call that wrong ming coco fiber. Coco fiber, yeah, yes. Yeah, we have that right now. Uh, supplying our coco pad uh, requirement. Uh, And then here comes yung foam. Separate oh, department naman yan. Yun yung ano eh. That's why nabuhay yung foam namin eh. Uh, uh, but these three departments... Pero right now ah, nagpo-produce sila on their own. Meron din silang sariling market. They also sell oh, outside. Oh. Kasi alam ko, coco fiber, ginagamit yan sa mga polstery na silya ng kotse. Oh, yeah, yeah. For example, oh, yan, pwede, yan pwede. ang pinakamatigas na... Ano, kasi hindi pwede masyado malambot. Oh. Kailangan firm. Oh, firm. You, you need... It's only coco fiber that becomes firm. Uh, But di ba locally yan sourced? Ano yung buko yan, di ba? Uh, yeah, from coconut. Uh, coconut, uh, coconut, coconut. coconut. Hindi tayo nauubusan yan. Oh yeah, from, from Laguna, Kusan Quezon. Saan, yeah. all, over, all over the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So problema pala natin yung chemical ng foam. We don't produce it. We don't yeah. have a chemical factory here. Actually, yung mga, let's say, yung methylene, yung mga silicone, yun, pwede yung locally. You can buy it oh, now. Pero yung like, like yung uh, PPG, TDI, yun yung supposedly dapat imported eh. Why? Because simply uh, locally, because Locally, available siya, kaya lang mahal. Ah, mahal na oh, mahal na tarif. Oh, mahal, mahal. Pero locally manufactured na rin yun? No, yun? no. Usually, ano, ini-import din ah, mga... Imported ah, talaga. Imported din. But if only all these products were here already and available, knowing Mr. Chu, you'd probably source everything local. Yeah. So it makes it easier, cheaper, oh. and the quality will oh, continuously oh, oh. improve. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this first part, this episode. You see, we all always like to complain and make issues about things we don't like, that things that we see when we analyze that are incorrect. But sometimes we have to take time and analyze exactly those, the people, the, the companies, the brands that make it and make a success out of it. Because if it wasn't for these brands, we would have nothing. We would have nothing made, manufactured uh, by us Filipinos. Uh, Jerry, before we end, a uh, quick message to our viewers. Uh, why don't you try our, ano, uh, our, our product, our mattress, foam, and uh, some of our furnitures? They're, all of them are readily available at SM Supermarket, Hypermart, Homeworld, and even our home. Our home. Yeah, yeah. Pure gold also, you, you can... Meron you, na yeah, rin. Yeah, meron na rin. Okay, thank you very much. That's what I call an ad for a show and a show for an ad. Salem Bed. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about something totally different. So before I surprise you, I'm going to give you that break. Okay, as we go into the break, quick, go to the comfort room. We'll be right back.
Hello, my name is Harriton Watkin. We're on to the second portion. Our topic now goes a little serious. It's about terrorism, exactly where it's going, what is it, and what exactly are we doing about it. We have a special guest who I find extremely interesting. Uh, let me try to introduce to you what he is made of. His name is Rudolfo. He's known as John Ortiz Tiope. And I used to call it, I was calling it Tope, but it's Tiope. <laughs> uh, he's got a PhD. Um, he has some. He has a doctorate degree, not one, but four. Uh, let me read this to you. Doctor of Philosophy, major in leadership, minor in organization. He has a magna cum laude uh, on, on organizational development and a magna cum laude at that. He has a doctorate in education, uh, education management with distinction. He also want, has one with philosophy and a major in management. He also has a doctorate in public administration and he has units earned on that together with business administration and environmental studies. Now, if I keep reading this and all the accolades <laughs> that go to, his, to all his academic success, that will take up the whole show. So let's meet the man we have, Dr. John. Hi, John. Thanks for being here. Sorry, I didn't want to talk to you. We can talk to you. Great, great afternoon. Thanks. Uh, John, Dr. John, um, let's start with that question. What is the state of terrorism that is now uh, confronting us, considering the current events that have just taken place with the president going to Tokyo and heading a uh, meeting with another, well, he'll be my head of state, you know, but let's give him A plus for effort. That's about it. I don't yeah. want to comment anymore yeah, okay, on the legalities, yeah. but what is the state of terrorism? You know, the, the state of terrorism right now is very alarming as we look at it on the, because the problem right now is that people would only look at terrorism as uh, synonymous to Osama bin Laden. When Osama bin Laden died, they say that terrorism died. No, it's not dead anymore. It's not that terrorism doesn't die. Why? Well, once we look at even when people who now are now looking at the, the internet and research on the Wikipedia, they would look at who are the qualified or the categorically classified terrorists in the country. There, there are four. There is the Abu Sayyaf, the MILF, the MNLF and the CPP, NPA, and the F. But there's also one that which is not classified, which is the opportunist politicians and <laughs> government <laughs> officials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So within the state of terrorism, that as you look at on the provinces, there is insurgency in the provinces. But these insurgents are uh, hiding on the term insurgency and ideology. But how could it be uh, ideology and insurgency? Well, in fact, they're burning uh, buses. And they're uh, extorting money and asking but for revolutionary taxes. Isn't that just being rebel activity? Yes, they say they have the 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 ideology, but it, as they move right now, it is more of uh, extortionism and banditry. Mm -hmm. Correct. Specifically, when banditry. they when they ask uh, revolutionary taxes for bi big businesses and even that's the banditry. yeah, that's banditry. In Tagalog, that's tulisan. <laughs> tulisan, tama. tulisan. Ganon na nangyare. So right now, they they have even legal fronts as. Mm -hmm as we know it, because they have two forms of struggle, the, uh, the armed struggle and the legal struggle, mm. which is the legal struggle, they have the, the different party list and they have the different mass organizations. They're and already the infiltrated Congress without question and they're all there. In fact, Anna, the party list yeah. is... Wait, wait, let me see. You also have a group. You're the national president of the first Philippine pro-democracy foundation. Yeah. That's the pro-dem. Tell the us pro -dem. about that. How does that work into terrorism and everything? Anti-terrorism, right? No, it's... Anti-terrorism in a way that we're looking at an alternative. And also we're looking okay. at the direction of a sustainable development. Jan wins sustainable development because yeah. once we look at sustainable development, specifically on the, the aspects of uh, Agenda 21, we, we would now look at, uh, for you to hate terrorism, what would you like to do if you hate terrorism? There should be a, the alternative. It's not just like mm. hating the communists, hating these uh, insurgents. Kung mali sila, Ano ang tama? So root, you're trying to find out the root cause and address that instead. Yeah. The sustainable whatever so strategy. There's so many strategies in terms of attacking the, 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 the terrorism campaign. There's, in terms of the military, they're looking at two aspects in terms of terrorism uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. There is such a thing as uh, the terrorism uh, suppression mm -hmm. and there's such a thing as the terrorism prevention. On, okay. on, on the part of the suppression system, that is the uh, the military operations enforcement enforcement wherein they need to to go to the mountains and 
launch a war against uh, this terrorist group. Uh, correct. But, but these people wouldn't like to be called terrorists. They would say, we are insurgents. But it's only a concept of semantics. <laughs> Freedom fighters. <laughs> Freedom there's fighters. A, there's a thin line. You know? yeah. You're either government, which it makes you legal. <laughs> If you're not on government side, you're illegal. So you're crime. You're yeah. criminal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, on the pro dem as what is pro democracy? It's just easy because the word pro dem is being used by anti terrorist groups and anti communists. But on our part, pro, pro democracy is a progressive, responsible, and organized democracy. Mm -hmm. Why? If you do not like pro democracy, you what are you? You're an anti democracy. So <laughs> <laughs> good point. It's one or the other. <laughs> and they would say, oh, you're so very dogmatic. You're anti com. We're not anti com. We are uh, pro prog we're looking at progress. Right. We're looking at development. All right. Because uh, once we look at uh, communism at all, specifically when we look at the theories of communism, they would say that uh, the, the CPP, NPA, even the NDF right now, would say that we are just victims of injustice. Okay, I do agree that they're victims of injustice. But the problem is that the launch or the methodology wherein they would like to, uh, to move on and prosper the revolution there's is what's wrong th there's something wrong that's where it becomes a crime that it becomes a crime yeah yes, yes, yes. because when, when, when we look at history right now marx says that uh, revolution or communism would start in germany but marx was wrong it started in russia yes in russia so lenin applied marxism in russia so when lenin was ap applying the das kapital and the communist manifesto the, the German situation is different from that of the Russian situation. Yes. So what Lenin did is that he rewrite. It becomes Marxism, Leninism. Then the oh, revolution okay. won. Yes, then yes. there goes uh, Mao Zedong. Uh, Mao Zedong applied the, the thesis Lenin, and thesis. Uh, the, the thesis of uh, the Lenin, and they would say that the, it is more it is effective in Russia. But again, the Leninist approach is different in the Chinese situation. Mm. So he rewrote it again. It becomes Marxism. Leninism, Maoism, Mao Zedong yes. thought. Then there is a John Mason who is trying to be a Maoist, uh, Mao, Mao Zedong local, like from China goes to the Philippines and apply Maoism. And right now, he doesn't know the, the, the concept of a situational based analysis in the application of ideology. All right. Which is, the Chinese situation is different from that of the Philippine setting. Of course, iba ng, iba ng iba yan, eh. <laughs> That yes. is why the, rev the revolution is now 42 years, not winning anymore. It's, it's, it's yes. not winning, yeah. Mm. Because it is a different approach on the Philippine setting. Uh, so it is about time that these rebels or these people would now look at it that the methodology or even the ideology is not applicable right now in our country. So that's why Prodem came in. So mm, Prodem would, the birth of Prodem. The birth of Prodem. So if you would look at Prodem right now, is that what would be the, the approach? Because we could not launch a revolution through armed struggle. Why? Because that's very unmerciful, very bloody. So what we need is more of a, a change in terms of the internal. Change yourself before you change other people. Change yourself before you change the country. But the problem is that people who are advocating for this change do not even like to change themselves. And even the interest is their own pocket. <laughs> mm. That's the problem now. That's, that's what we're stuck with. Yeah. That's the state of terrorism. Yeah. Us. Yeah. In other words, where the problem? Where the state of terrorism? Yeah, th that is why on the state of terrorism, the government itself is also has a factor in terms of promoting terrorism. Why? Because the injustices being uh, perpetuated perpet by every it's also government it's yeah. part of it yeah yeah the government it's uh, the, the corrupt officials in the government mm. look at it you're an ordinary uh, Juan de la Cruz mm. for so many years you're just an ordinary laborer and there's a government employee yes yes you just being you go to the government and he becomes a millionaire uh, by means of corruption so yes, so. Yes, yes. so people would now uh, feel injustice and once they felt just that there goes the, the group of these uh, communist insurgents, then they would ask them, you know, the government is so much, uh, giving you so much pain, join our group. <laughs> so it's actually the root cause is also from the injustice from the government that they create that force these people to look for change. Yeah. But, but the problem right now is that uh, once these people look for change, they go to the mountains and they now would launch arm struggle. Arm struggle. Once they launch the armed struggle, the problem right now, you create a bad image for the country. In, in your uh, earlier episode, you're mentioning manufacturing and business. Yes. Okay. How would the investors, and why would the investors go in this country if there is terrorism on the different countrysides? Because we always look at it on the concept of the return of investment. 
why should I invest in summer? Yes, there well, is no ROI, there is no guarantee for sustainable manufacturing yeah. because of uh, social unrest. Yeah, social unrest. So what would happen is that if there are no opportunities in the provinces, people would migrate to Manila. <laughs> Which is what's happening. And when they migrate to Manila, there are no opportunities. Then there will go the illegal settlers if there are no opportunities. Which is what's happening. There are no, uh, there are no opportunities. As they say, ang taong gipit sa patalim ko makapit. Oh, tama yun, tama yun. So yung krimen, laging lalaki. Kaya malaki ang implikasyon ng terorismo sa uh -oh. krimen na nangyayari sa ating bayan. Mm -hmm. People would say na, Oy, Dr. John, bakit naman palagi mong sinisisi yung mga terrorists na yan? Hindi natin sila sinisisi because nakita rin natin na ang, the problem there is that uh, they're also victims. But the problem is that they like to make a solution but they create another problem. <laughs> With their solution which is wrong. Which is wrong. Because the arms struggle. Yes, yeah, yes, uh, yes. But what do you do? Uh, John, based on your studies, how did we become like this? How did we reach this stage, this catch-22 situation? <laughs> Wala na tayong moralidad eh. We've lost our values, we've lost our morals. At first, I started to blame the academe, yeah. then the church. Yeah. And then I realized, hindi eh. Everybody now wants to become a politician or go into government, mm. not because they want to serve the people anymore, mm. although that's what they mm -hmm. say, but it's really to enrich themselves. Mm. So what happened? What happened to our culture? Diba, in Catholicism, hindi naman tinuturo yun. Yeah, yeah, everybody's contributory to the problem. Oh, yun na nga eh. The church, the academy, the people have so many bobotante. Oh, 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 <laughs> bobotante. Very good. How did we get there? Can we blame the Spanish of the five or three hundred years that we were under them? Or what? The problem with the Filipinos is that they do not realize that they are really Filipinos. The, the idea, unlike the Japanese and the Koreans and other nations, but we have heritage. I don't. Know. The Filipinos have heritage. We have a nice, we have a nice flower, flowerful history. Mm. Yeah, know? yeah. We have we have the heritage, but the concept of teaching liberal arts and history is not being internalized by the students right now. Specifically, one problem of the state of education is the poor disregard to liberal arts education. Why? In terms of the academe. Uh, teachers or even students wouldn't like to study liberal arts education anymore because they would say, it is not a major subject. Uh, uh, it's true. Right? Uh, when, when in fact, teaching liberal arts education molds the holistic personality of uh, the entire person. It teaches them nationalism. It teaches them how to be a Filipino. It teaches them how to, to fight for their country, specifically the military training. Mm -hmm. The problem right now, we have no military training. In China, we have about two years military training. Singapore, we have two years. We used to have that ROTC. ROTC, yeah. <laughs> in, our, in ROTC, uh, the military training uh, would, would teach us uh, discipline. How discipline and how to fight for our country. Lee Kuan Yew once says that uh, once a person knows how to fight for his country and how to, how to die for his country would really be a good, uh, good uh, citizen of a country. Mm. The, but the problem that, that is that we changed the ROTC with another subject and it's not a... Uh, uh, promoting nationalism. Yes, RTC now is not mandatory. It's not obligatory anymore. It's uh, it's yeah. a it's an elective. It's an elective. Yeah, it's an elective. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, an elective. Yeah. Na lang and they would school. say it's militarization ng ating bayan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ng mga but because of that, that's how you instill democracy. Uh, what happens in this system wherein the root cause is basically injustice? One injustice and another injustice and another one. And all their solutions just create another problem. It just multiplies and then metastasizes. No, no, injust injustice is caused by greedy people within the society. There would be no injustice if there are no greedy people in, within the society. For example, as but as greed is human. Yeah, as they Doctor. say, based on psychology, we have unlimited needs and wants. If we are given 100 pesos, you would like another 1,000. From 1,000, so on and, and so million, on. Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's human nature, isn't it? But, but, the, but the problem may be, it's more of molding the, the, the human nature and the values, right? Now, Disciplining the, it, the, holding the, it back. Yeah, holding it back. Because uh, we're being open to the material world. And being open to so much to the material world is that being, having so much money is a status. Being rich is a status. Mm. <laughs> and, unlike, uh, and looking at that being rich, and they would now sacrifice moral integrity and dignity. Mm. That's the problem right I, now. I agree with you. Mm. So there's a lack of nationalism, discipline among a people to regenerate themselves to become a better people and be more progressive. Yeah. Anong nangyari sa ating kanya-kanya na wala lahat. Yeah. Parang gano'n ang nangyari. Uh, How could we promote to correct that? Oh, very quickly lang. I know it's very difficult. I'm not asking you to solve the problems yeah, yeah. of the country. Yeah. I mean, there are so many people that are studied and you know they're all over and everyone's trying it. How would you propose to correct it? You know, as they always say, what would be the problem? Is it the system or the people? 
sometimes the system declare uh, dictates the behavior of the people. Correct. Yeah. I agree. So we need a system change. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But the the point is this: who would lead us to implement a better system? There should be somebody with a with a guide of the divine providence that. Maybe the president would be so benevolent leader. Uh, yeah, benevolent well, we leader. We tried that with Marcos. We yeah. failed. So, bagay. That's because he wasn't benevolent enough. Yeah. Ganon. At the start, he was benevolent. Very. Uh, he was very good. Yeah, yeah. First ten years, yeah. it was very. It was correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got rid of the politicians, yeah. and everybody mm -hmm. towed the line. Yeah. But more than anything, Marcos, um, the Marcos rule, martial law, introduced to us the concept of discipline. Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Today we have lost it. Yeah. Right now, in terms of discipline. People have no discipline anymore in terms of corruption. We, this is usually the problem in terms of the fight of corruption. Why? Mm. We, we would always like to look at the bigger fish in the, in the government in terms of the fight of corruption. But corruption would start from the lower level, uh, uh. specifically on the value setting. Once, okay, a, a, an ordinary driver would bribe a policeman. If such value would be corrected slowly by slowly, it, it would go to the top. But the problem is that it is now a culture. It's accepted. <laughs> yes, it's a culture. Yeah. Ngayon hindi na nakakaya to be corrupt eh. Yeah. Parang mas marami ako sa lapi. Mas, kung mas marami ako sa lapi, I'm successful. You're mas, not. Sasabihin nila, mamapahiya ka. Okay, nabibiling ko naman ako yung respeto. <laughs> uh, uh, correct, correct. So, there is really, at, it's obvious we can't seem to have a revolution because we don't have a people that are going to stand up against each other and fight. So, mali. Ano? Do, do we need a revolution? But what kind of a revolution? It's more of a revolution on values, a value revolution. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I keep saying that too, you know. I, I totally agree with you. A, a, value, a revolution on character in general. But how could it be done? It is a long process. A long process. But, but we don't have the time, Doc. Hmm? You know, ako, I believe if we don't do it now, Alamo, it's, it's like smoking cigarettes. You, you want to cut the habit, you just cut it. In deep way there, because this corruption, this, this, this culture of corruption is so well embedded into everyone's lifestyle, this moral fiber is made of, it's all corrupt. Eh? In the, kaya, uh, kaya, kaya, if, if there would be somebody that would handle the system that, you, that would say that you do not like to be changed, I would change you. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Ganun na, no? wala nang iba. Eh. Oh, there, there is no other oh. solution. Kasi kung hihintayin pa natin yung mga tao na talagang magbago, it is a long process. Kaya lang ang problema ganito eh. In terms of philosophy, ang konsepto ng mabuti ay eh, kailangan may masama. <laughs> Palagi, kahit na mapabuti natin ang ating lipunan, eh, marami pa rin lalabas na masama. Pero ang mas maganda, konti na lang sana ang masama. <laughs> uh, more controllable. More controllable. Uh, do you believe in a society that, has, that enjoys all the freedoms like what we have? Sumobra ang freedoms natin, di ba? I guess if you have a benevolent leader, yeah. the freedoms will be curtailed, certain freedoms, yeah. but discipline will be introduced. Yeah. Hopefully, nationalism will follow yeah. and will be embedded in the people. Gano ng hapon, di ba? Kita mo yung earthquake hindi sila nagnakawan. Yeah. Uh -huh. They didn't loot the stores. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, they helped each other. Kasi maliwanag sa hapon ang pagiging hapon. Na alam nila, pag sila yung nagnakaw sa kapwa pa hapon, ah, maghihirap ang kanilang bayan. Eh, sa uh, atin, hindi nakita ng kapwa Pilipino yan eh. Uh, 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 <laughs> na pag ninakawan mo yung kapwa Pilipino mo, naghihirap ang kapwa mo, maghihirap ang buong bayan. Inintindi nila lang yung bawat sarili nila. Parang isang politiko, pag nagnakaw sa kaba ng bayan, hindi niya maiisip na yung kanyang mga constituents ay maghihirap. At ang kanyang bayan maghihirap, isipin lang niya, siya ay mapanatili sa pwesto at manatiling mayaman at manatiling mayor, congressman, senator, at paman. <laughs> Ergo, oligarchs. Oligarchs, Warlords. oh yeah. <laughs> Especially those that have been around for five, six decades. And they continue to stay in power. Nakakalungkot nga lang ang mga warlords niya at saka mga oligarko niya. Itinatangkilik ng ating uh, mga taong bayan. Itinatangkilik. Uh, Bakit yun nangyari? Kasi minsan, ang nangyayari... Doon din sila kumikita. Doon din kumikita. At sinadya ng mga warlords niya at mga political dynasty niya na gawing mangmang ang kanilang mga tao. Para pagdating ng halalan, uh, eh kanilang uh, mabibili. Nila, mabibili. mabibili ulit. Ayaw uh, nila ng development eh. Stupefy them. Yeah. So, yeah. Stupefy. Na <laughs> uh, Harry Potter tuloy. Yun, yeah. No? Oh, yeah. No, but it's true. It's yeah. true. Mm. So, they are in control. Gee, it's also Machiavellian. You, know? you mm. create the conflict so you can control anything that goes out of line yeah. this way. Oh. <laughs> it's, you know what's sad, uh, John, Dr. John, mm. you know what's sad is the bad, the corrupt, the immoral, the one with no values has succeeded mm. in creating that. They have succeeded. We have failed. We have failed in our nationalism and, and our democracy. The problem right now, the, the pillar of morality should be the church is to be the one to guide the, that concept of morality. But even in the church, there is also corruption. 
I did say that, ladies and gentlemen. He did. Siya nagsabi niyan, hindi ako. But, hindi, ito nga pagkasabi nila eh. Pag yung politiko ay humingi ng pera sa tao, eh, korupsyon. Pag si father humingi ng pera, donasyon. Natutuo yan. Natutuo yan. Pero ganun din yan. They're both asking eh. Di ba? Ganun din yan eh. Uh, very quickly, we're already at the end of the show and we're at the top of the hour. Tama ba yung ginagawa natin solutions ng government, the current administration towards the MILF and the other rebel groups in the South? Because I know, I, I know deep and down, uh, President Pinoy or Aquino, I'm sure wants to do something good. Yeah. I, I, it, I mean, mukha naman is bred that yeah, yeah. way. Eh. Of course, the administration and the people around him, well, that's another big, big, big question mark. But he himself... Tama ba yung approach na yan? How to approach the MILF, the uh, Abu Sayyaf, uh, and all the rebel groups? Actually, the problem groups. there is that the president shows his weakness. Baliktad uh, Yeah, kasi number one, the, the MILF is considered as a terrorist group. And on that point, you do not negotiate with the terrorists. <laughs> ah, good. Straight to the point. Yeah. <laughs> Ganun lang yan, ano? Ganun lang kasimple. If, if you like to negotiate and you like peace, oh, sige, I'm, I'm sincere. You're a terrorist group and you, you would like peace, it would not be me to negotiate to you, you are not the head of the state. And number one is that Murad is not the sole authority in the MILF. There is also Kato, which is much powerful uh, than Murad. So, it would create another bad precedent if you grant the, the demands of the MILF. Even the other Muslim group would say, oh, pwede rin kaming sub-state. The other group of sub-state din tayo. Sub-state, sub-state na lang. Ganun na mangyayari. Palit na palit na lang. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to cut the show. We're already at the end of the program. Uh, I'd like to give you Dr. John mm -hmm. Chope, um, your message to our viewers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, alam niyo po mga kaibigan, in this little time that we have with uh, Harry, eh, kahit pa paano, eh, ang inyong lingkod ay nakapag-share ng onte sa usapin ng uh, la paglaban sa terorismo. Sabi nga namin sa usapin ng isang progresibo, responsable at organisadong demokrasya, ang pagbabago sa lipunan, hindi lamang kailangan ng malagim na pamamaraan o pagsama sa mga madudukong pakikibaka. Kailangan mahalin natin ang ating mga sarili at mahalin ang kapwa Pilipino. Kung maga, hindi na kailangan dumanak ng dugo, magmahalan po tayo. Baguhin muna ang sarili bago mabagong bayan. Kung maga, let us change ourselves and let us change the nation. It is a problem of values and morality. And let us look at the mirror and say, Ako ba ay isang tunay na Pilipino at ako ba ay makakatulong sa aking bayan? Yun lang po, Harry. <laughs> you know, if only I could speak Tagalog that fluently, mananagalog na ako tuloy, tuloy Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, I'm gonna get Dr. John to be regular on my show, on this show, if not to co-host, even to be a resource. And we will have him more often because this way, in the, on his next appearance, we will start going into uh, specific issues rather than talk of theory or the whole system as a whole. We cannot solve the problems just right there. You know, my son always brings it up to me and says, uh, this is what we do, just, just take out the judiciary. That was what I said on TV the other day. Let's outsource the judiciary altogether. Let's just cut them. Let's run them over the bad people and whatnot. Kill them all. Hindi. You know why? The option for failure does not exist. This is still a state. This is a country. We call it the Philippines. And we're all Filipinos. And to give up means that option, you've already succumbed to that option, which is to fail. We can't fail. We're not supposed to fail. And we will not fail. We may have a lot of problems. But we will solve it. It might not be together. It might not be now. But we keep trying. Because the minute we stop, then we will become a failed state. We hope you've enjoyed our program. My name is Harrington Watko. Stay with us. Oh, yes, my public awareness service. Let's see. Beware, don't buy the Aeronox gadget. That ruined my car. The second one, beware, Akari, that light thing, that's not a super branch, just so you know. Maraming salamat po, and thank you, and good night. <laughs>